Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Wow, there's nothing like condensing eight hours or 80 hours of my mindset material into eight minutes. And thinking back to when I was at school, I can confidently tell you that summarizing is not my strong point if I think back to the essays that I used to hand in. But Vicky, I am deeply humbled and honored to have been invited to be part of this platform. It came at the right time for me. It really, really did. You've given me a challenge that I happily accept, and I'm using this to turn a weakness of mine into a new strength. That is keeping into the time limit, which is something that I'm not very good at. Thank you for the warm welcome. And yes, I do use my voice as my career, but at the moment, and especially during lockdown, 95% of my time is dedicated to food relief, electricity relief, education support to the beneficiaries at an organization, a nonprofit organization that I founded, co-founded five years ago, having no idea what I was getting myself into. But we are in a strange time and I love the work that I do and I learn lessons from the beneficiaries and the families and the and the people in the community who live in such abject poverty and, and challenges that I can't help but learn so many life lessons from them in my utter admiration of strength and resilience. So thank you. I loved the quote earlier about the two most important days of our lives, one being the day that you're born and the other day being the day that you discover your purpose. And even though it has been a gradual development and I, I have known that I'm ultimately a good person and a kind person and somebody who likes to help other people, I can actually say without a doubt that my purpose in life is to make other people feel good about themselves, to find their 100% happy, their 100% truth. And at the same time, while I help people do that, I'm blessed to, as I just mentioned, to continuously work on myself and, and elevate my own level of happiness. So it's really a win-win situation. But one of the tools that I use for myself and with everybody that I work with is the tool of hindsight. And so often in, in the work, in, in when we read inspirational things and we watch inspirational videos and we're always looking to the future looking to the future what can you do differently what can you do differently what action do you need to take and at this time with this pandemic with everybody treading on new water a lot of people are needing are being forced to transform because we don't know where the world is going to be taking us so i use hindsight as a, as a tool for moving into the future. And hopefully with what I'm going to share with you now, um, I'm hoping to hit you square in the face. And by that, I mean to give you the hope to inspire yourself, to transform something in your life that you aren't happy with or that you may feel restricted by. So I'm going to ask you all just to think back to some different times in your life something that you did as a child. And, and funnily enough, a lot of the things that I'm gonna mention have been mentioned by Vicky and by the other speakers. So I hope that this is sort of going to culminate into a nice conclusion for this event. Vicky said, tap yourself on the shoulder. And, and when she was talking about that, she was completely right. I'm also guilty of not giving myself recognition for things that I have done well or things that I have accomplished. I, I take it for granted that the things that I do is just part of my life. But actually, I've, I've come to a stage where I can look back and say, I went through stages of self-loathing, self-loathing. But now I like who I am. I'm proud of who I am. And I live in a state of 100% happiness virtually every single day, even when times are really tough. So I'd like you to think back to your childhood of something that you did or experienced that you could be super proud of, something that made you really happy, and, and think about who were the people with you. And when I think about 
when I think back, I think about despite having been horribly teased and verbally bullied for my bad skin, my glasses, which I now own, um, you know, and I like, and for other things that I'm not really going to get into now, but I have actually been successfully employed since I was 14 years old. I, since I was 14 years old, I have always had a source of income. And I can think back to that time and think who was in my life at that time. And I would like you to do the same. Now I would like you to think of another stage in your life when you're a little bit older, something that made you feel good, something that you can be proud of, and maybe something that you actually didn't give yourself that recognition for. So I'd like to share with you that when I was 16, we moved from England to Holland. And shortly after we moved there, my brother, who was three years older than me, he died in a car accident. And I didn't know why at the time, but I decided a few months after that, that I was going to remove myself from the international school where we had both, um, that we were both enrolled at. And I put myself into a Dutch school where I knew no one. I barely spoke a word of Dutch. And I had two years to learn how to speak and write Dutch fluently and well enough to write my high school exams. And I got on with it and I did it and I passed. And I even got 84% for Dutch first language, which is actually bloody remarkable, if I might say so myself. So that was that stage of my life. And then I want you to pick up a little bit later in your life. Think about who was in your life then and then move forward a little bit and think about something else that you did well, that you accomplished, something that made you happy. Think about the people that were with you at that time. For me, having no clue how to run a business, myself and my, my new BFF after having had a baby, we decided to introduce a brand new baby product into the South African market. We didn't know how to run businesses. Um, she had a marketing skill set. I had a performing arts skill set and I could talk and I had confidence. And out we went there. We learned everything from manufacturing, retailing. Um, wholesaling, distribution, importing, exporting, and we won awards for our business and for our product, for our innovation. Now, so those are three, three moments out of my life. And there are three points I would like to make here to you. Firstly, just to reiterate, I studied performing arts and I qualified as a speech and drama teacher and I did a diploma in effective communication that was almost unheard of back in 1998, giving my age away. But I have worked nonstop, mostly self-employed, but occasionally employed. And I have not been formally qualified for any job that I have done. I did not study business, I did not study import and export, I did not study manufacturing, textile design, anything. So that is the one point. Secondly, I had up until recently never thought that I had done anything particularly remarkable. And I certainly hadn't ever given myself the credit. And I recognize that too many of us go through life thinking that we are normal, and unremarkable. Maybe that's the same for you. The third point I would like to make is that the people who were by your side and around you when you were a smaller child or younger, were they the same people who were with you when you thought to your second point of remarkability or your third point of achievement or happiness, whichever memories you were thinking about. Because for me, this was a very valuable lesson and something that I work with, with, with my clients is to recognize that the only constant in your life is you. You don't need to always look to the left and to the right and to compare yourself to other people and to think you are better or not as good as other people. Those people are not 100% guaranteed to be in your life all the time, but you are the 100% constant in your life. And you need to 
recognize the value that you can offer regardless of anybody else around you. So in hindsight, when I look at things I have done, I had to ask myself how and why was I able to accomplish those things? And this is the lesson in mindset that I'd like to share with you today. And it has been mentioned, and that is choice. Failure just wasn't a word I knew. I knew sadness, I knew grief, I knew heartache, I knew disappointment, I knew loneliness, I knew ugliness, I did, I, I knew fear for, I knew fear for thinking I could be happy, but I never held myself back. I did fail along the way. I failed often. I fell often and I fell badly. I lost everything two or three times in my life, but I just got up and carried on as if I had broken a nail. You know, oh, that's inconvenient. Nails heal and grow again. And I now recognize that I have sort of taken that on as a simile for my own life. Nowhere did I re receive an instruction manual on how to get there, but I always just focused on where I was going. And somehow I just made everything happen. I never stopped looking at what my goal was, ever. So my message for you today is to, if you are not where you want to be, if you have not found your 100% truth, your 100% happiness, don't criticize yourself for that. Picture what it is that you want to do. Picture your end goal and just take action steps each and every day to get there. And it doesn't matter, it really does not matter how many times you have to reinvent yourself. The only constant in your life is you. You answer to you. So just to end off, I saw something very pertinent about stepping into the arena and playing your A game. And these words came to me perfectly. Um, earlier on today and that was by a friend of mine Dawn Evans and she said success depends and I had to write it down straight away success depends on the second letter and that letter is you thank you